Yes, another Joker video. I can't help it because it's just so fascinating, everything surrounding this movie. You've got the media absolutely trying to destroy the movie, going pretty much on the offensive against it for like two months now they've been after this movie. Hard, really hard. It's very interesting to watch. And then instead of bending the knee, the director and the actor, and to an extent, even the studio, are like, yeah, uh, we don't care. We want to make money. Here's my middle finger. And now we have the backlash to that. So we're going to go over that. We've got two articles that I think are interesting to go over because this one I really liked because look at the headline. How could I, if you've been watching my channel for a while, how could I not go for this one? Joker director Todd Phillips thinks woke culture has killed comedy. Twitter is here to prove him wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I had to grab this one. I mean, it's Metro too. How can you not do a video on Metro? Look at the award-winning journalism they have here. Lord of the Rings actress calls for female Gandalf a new TV series. <laughs> Metro is a joke. What a dumb idea this is, making female Gandalf. Luckily, the Tolkien people, the guys that control it, the family that control all this stuff, I'm pretty sure are strict on stuff and won't allow something dumb and woke like that. So... What is woke culture saying about Todd Phillips? Well, they've been calling him a racist and a, uh, a whammon hater. All kinds of fun stuff. All because he said, I'm just tired of all these clowns on Twitter ruining culture. So let's go ahead and skip down. This is just a pretty much a recap. So if you don't know what happened, Todd Phillips did an interview with Joaquin Phoenix. The piece was more centered on Joaquin Phoenix, but... Phillips to have some responses in there. And he pretty much said, you can't really make comedy anymore in today's, in today's world because people are so butthurt about everything. And of course, because he blasted on Twitter, they didn't quite like that. So a bunch of dummies on Twitter came out and gave their opinion. And the article says this, unfortunately for Todd, he made these comments in a year when Booksmart received critical acclaim. Critical acclaim. Well, that really means a lot in today's world, doesn't it? They pretty much, you pretty much always see the audience rating super low, critic rating really high. And we've talked about this tons of times. Critics are garbage now. They all live in Hollywood or San Diego or San Francisco. They're out of touch with the rest of society. They really are. There's a reboot of Jay and Silent Bob coming, and it'll probably be as unfunny as the other one was. I'm sure a lot of people aren't going to like that I just said that. But I'm sorry, those two characters worked better as supplements. I like a lot of those old um, Kevin Smith movies. But I didn't think Jane Silent Bob was that good. It was funny the first time. It didn't age as well as the other movies. It's just my opinion. And I'm sure a lot of people aren't going aren't to agree with me. But I really also don't see that movie being particularly that funny around woke culture you know kevin smith is kind of sold out i just don't see him being as edgy as he used to be so that's my take on that but let's go ahead and look at the people they highlighted here so we got this guy here says todd phillips go try to be funny nowadays with this woke culture and this guy lists the good place barry flea bag flea bag brooklyn 99 it's always sunny in philadelphia curb your enthusiasm Bojack Horseman, Bob's Burgers, Rick and Morty, and Sheets Creek. So here's the thing. So I only know a couple of these. I'm going to touch on the ones that I've actually watched. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Now, I know those two are older than woke culture, which has pretty much really set in the past couple of years. I, I, there was a really good article I missed where Charlie Day talked about this. And I think that shows like that in South Park are grandfathered in. So they don't get hated on because they're older than things are. Like, they're older than the craziness going on right now. They're like, well, those shows were always offensive, so we'll give them a pass. You try to start those shows right now. Out of the blue, let's just go ahead and say It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia starts up today. That show wouldn't last one season. Sorry, they'd cancel it because everybody on Twitter would be butthurt about it. 
I think that's a really good point that Charlie Day made, and it really does apply. That is that is what would happen, I promise you. It would get ran off because it's too offensive. It's just too offensive. So I think a lot of those shows that people like to name, oh, those are doing just fine, is because they get a pass because they predate all of the sensitive butthurt that's been going on lately. It's when we're here. Very sad to hear that comedy doesn't work anymore. My consultants to Phoebe Waller, Kamal, whoever these people are, Adam Sandler listed. Adam Sandler has been funny in a long time. A long time. I like how they name a bunch of woke comedians, too. Todd Phillips. Wait, woke culture is making comedy impossible. Takai Watati. I don't even know who that is. Is about to play an old World War II guy. Don't know who that is. Probably not going to be funny. I think Todd Phillips is doing an extraordinary job on this press tour. Scarlett Johansson. So you can see all the butt hurt here. Uh, people are seeing it. So this one I liked. Between Two Ferns, the movie. Actually, that is a pretty funny YouTube thing. I don't know what that's from, but it's it's that guy from The Hangover does interviews, and he's really awkward. I think you should leave in the unofficial Bash Brothers experience. We're all made by white guys who are somehow managed to be super hilarious without resorting to edgy humor. The point is that you can't do edgy humor anymore. It's kind of the point. So you can't do it or you'll be ran out. It's kind of the point. Like comedy is being censored and restricted. That's not, that's a bad thing. And that's what these people just don't get, that it's bad. You can always just not watch it or listen to it. It's like Dave Chappelle said in his special, you clicked on my face, right? Just like you clicked on this video. If you don't like what the video has to say, you know what you're getting on to. I'm sure, I don't know what the thumbnail is going to be, but I'm sure it was something ridiculous telling you the kind of content you're going to hear when you click on it. If it's such a problem, don't watch it. But these people are, are so, they so want to be mad that they will click on it and then they'll go and say how you don't have a right to listen or watch what you want to watch because they're butthurt about it. It's ridiculous. And then this was what really caught my eye. This this guy by Rod uh, Tenenbaum here. Sad to learn Tom Phillips is a ja- Todd Phillips is a jackass who thinks SJW is a trying to ruin comedy. Also note the use of the word guys. So he used guys in a general sense in his in his comment, but they're taking it to that he's saying that only guys can be funny. That's the kind of like critiquing and and picking apart things these people do to destroy you. So then we got this one. I don't even know what its outlet is. Grazio it says, "Wake up, call Todd Phillips. If you have to offend people to be funny, you're not good enough to be a comedy writer." I think uh, that's a really stupid point because there's all kinds of comedy. But the best thing about comedy is when it pushes boundaries. It literally keeps speech free. But you know. We're trying to get rid of that old pesky freedom of speech anyway. <laughs> That's got to go. We got to get rid of that anyway. But this is the best. This, let's look at the look at the the subline here. The fact that mediocre white men aren't succeeding in comedy anymore isn't something to cry about. How dare you! So we're gonna skip down because the first little bit of this article is a lead up to the Joker movie. And what's been going on and, and why he's upset. And then it quotes him. Like I said, I have a whole video on him giving the media the finger. It was literally yesterday I made that video. So go check that out. But we skip down. And here's the response to the article. Like the article gives. So, yeah, we've heard the old, old saying time and time again. You know the one. If you can't make it work, just quit. Because that's what he's really saying, isn't it? He doesn't understand how to be funny without offending people. So he might as well give up because that's the true marker of success. Not being able to adapt with the times or work hard to maintain your status as a world-renowned writer and director of comedy films. Ironically, it's quite hilarious because the fact that a man with this attitude that has been able to achieve such esteem says a lot about his privilege. You in full retard, man. Never go for retard. In fact, it says a lot about all the men who are supposedly quitting comedy because their offensive jokes won't fly anymore. It says good riddance. That's right. Good riddance. So got to get rid of those comedians that are edgy and offensive. And then we got to put in, you know, sensitive people like Anna Akana. 
you know, that woke comedian on YouTube with 2.5 million subscribers because she hits trending and she gets boosted by YouTube. Oh, that's right. That's a thing too that's been going on. There's a reason why like my videos, Tim Pool's videos, Quartering's videos, all our videos don't show up. It's because, you know, well, first off, Orange Man bad. We also don't push the right message. You know, you have to be in line with certain people's politics and you get on the trending page. That's how things work. And then there's that whole weird thing with that woman, like like YouTube, you know, the tinfoil hat stuff saying that this YouTuber is paid for. That woman that lives in a van, she did like one interview with Philip DeFranco and then all of a sudden she got like a million subscribers or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost fully in agreement with the people that put their hats on for that one and say that YouTube's paying for her. I, I kind of buy that. I think that that's a real thing. No one's really talked about it for a while, but her subscri- her views have dropped down and they don't match up with the subscribers she's getting. Just some don't smell right there, you know? Anyway, finally, mediocre men who have been indulged and entitled their entire career are realizing they don't deserve the top spots in their industry. Now, those are reserved for comedy writers and comedians who can actually be funny without making cheap jokes about people that are more marginalized than them. Really? So, I don't know. You've probably, I'm, I'm sure most of you that watch my content have seen The Hangover, Old School Road Trip. Man, oh man, I didn't know those movies were, were racist. Did you, did you notice all of that racism in those movies? Do you see what they're doing? This is what they always do with literally no evidence. They just throw those things in there and just label you like that because you don't agree with them. That's where we're at now. Luckily, though, a lot of people are catching on to this and not buying it. However, it's still damaging nonetheless. So they say, you know, these Tiffany Haddish, Mindy Kaling, Leslie Jones. Notice how it's all lady comedians. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, Leslie Jones, really? <laughs> it's really? Anyway, because you're because wake up call to all the funny guys quitting comedy, those jokes have never been funny to the people you were talking about. Happy people didn't suddenly wake up and start hating homophobic jokes. And women at POC or disabled people suddenly didn't decide to be offended by everything. Yes, they did. Actually, here's the thing. These people they're listing these groups, none of them are offended by this stuff, really. You know who's offended by everything? Millennial white people. (laughs) Those are the people that are offended by everything and are deciding what these people in these groups that they call POC and disabled people and all this stuff, they're deciding what you should be offended by. Isn't that in itself some kind of weird form of of racism? It kind of is, at least in my opinion. Anyway, just the millennial millennial white dudes, those are the worst ones. I'm telling you because they think they're the moral authority and they get to decide how other people feel. It's really strange that no one's ever talked about that. Anyway, it was said best by Anna Akana. That's the YouTuber I was talking about with the horrible comedy. A comedian and actor with over 2.5 million YouTube subscribers. Jokes about race are also effing cheap. She told Logan Paul on his impulsive podcast. Logan Paul has a podcast. Who really wants to hear that guy talk about anything? It's, It's such a strange world. I hate the comedians complaining like everything's so PC. Write better effing jokes then. Keep up with the times. No, the times are wrong. Comedy should not be restricted. I love how, like... Let's just restrict comedy. Let's get rid of the freedom of speech, all that stuff. That's no one else's problem, so you can't grab the low-hanging fruit anymore. No, you still can, and the ones that do, do quite well. Look at uh, Dave Chappelle and Bill Burr. They're quite successful, and they still grab that low-hanging fruit, and it's still quite hilarious. And I'm telling you what, that kind of comedy is going to have a bounce back because now it's being seen as taboo and counterculture. And that's what's cool. So that stuff's going to have a bounce back. Literally, like, <laughs> business is going to be good, at least on my channel, because 
All of that stuff is going to have a bounce back. All of these people are going to screech about it. And it's going to be fun to make fun of the screechers, which I really do enjoy doing. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Now, here's the thing. Okay, so here's where this is going to fall. If Joker is successful and makes a boatload of money, you're going to see Todd Phillips get to work again and not get canceled. If the Joker is a dud, he'll probably get canceled. And that's the sad thing about it. But I think Joker is going to be really good. And I think it's going to make a boatload of money. Therefore, he's going to be in demand to make more movies like Joker. And he'll get to keep running his mouth and putting these stupid woke people into the ground with his with his savageness. And, well, we'll get to keep talking about it because it's fun to do. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Make sure you're still subscribed. And share the video. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.